I just wanted to thank you all for looking at my material, passing it along, and sharing it. I have no other intent but to share the truth and to help you understand it as well. Tonight, we're going to talk about something that I think is quite important, uh, especially given this week's act, uh, activities. The gig is up. The brown dwarf is here. And what I mean by the gig is up, um, I think there's been a lot of lies and a lot of behavior that can be explained with the approach of this brown dwarf. For example, why they're building massive underground military bases, why they're storing food, why they're ordering FEMA coffins, why they're setting up FEMA camps. No, they're not setting up FEMA camps to take down the conservatives. They're setting up FEMA camps because they're, they know there's going to be refugees. So let's just get straight right now that there's a lot going on and a lot of things that we didn't know until just this week. Before I start, though, I wanted to talk about corroborating evidence. It's hard to pronounce, but basically it's evidence that tends to support a proposition that's already supported by some initial evidence. Therefore, it's in typically in a court they call circumstantial evidence or corroborating evidence where several different pieces of information tie together to make a case. I would report to you today after the evidence I've seen this week and that I'm going to show you today, tonight, that um, there's no longer a doubt that this thing is in our solar system, that it's close and it's going to start affecting the Earth quite soon. The evidence mounts. The gig is up. On December 15th, 2015, I saw a startling image that took me out of my, my asleep state. It was from, I can't pronounce it, the Luca, Australia on December 15th, 2015. I was just tracking sky cams that day and I came across this image which was shocking. So I started checking other sky cams in Australia and was coming up with similar results. The funny thing about this particular sky cam on December 15th is it stays stuck in this position as if somebody down there is saying, somebody look, there's something weird in my sky. I believe it's Nemesis. On December 14th, just prior to December 21st, I, I was studying cloud, uh, red cloud formations, um, you know, approaching the Earth and trying to confirm that through ex through various, um, you know, imagery. These shots were taken from ISS in the HD viewing experiment. Got some images offline. Got some images from the craft itself. Um, we're starting to make out objects. We were starting to make out this red cloud, and then they moved the camera of the ISS in this particular best viewing position, 45 degrees to the left, so we couldn't see it. In the image to the right, you can see the red space dust approaching, and I made a video about that. Go check it out. On December 18th, we started to see very, very defined <laughs> things starting to appear in the ISS. Again, that's about the time they turned it. Then on December 17th, I saw for the first time because I started saying, well, if I can see this from Brazil, this bright thing, you know, surrounded by this red dot, then I should be able to see it from the South Pole. Lo and behold, on December 20, 17th, I pulled this image from the Australian Antarctica um, South Pole camera. It's a natural light camera, by the way, which even makes it more compelling, um, and saw this object. This week I figured out the chemtrails. Now, maybe that's a pretty bold statement. Maybe I'm only seeing part of the picture, but it's pretty obvious to me what's going on. This was taken back in uh, late November, and several of the color shots showing the natural light of the Earth were um, strangely illuminated with a red, um, weird color on, on the other side of the planet. After this happened for a couple of days, they turned all the imagery on this natural light camera to black and white so you can't see the hemisphere that's being lit by this other object in our solar system. Chemtrails are everywhere now. They obstruct them. Uh, this is a little animation that came from a person in Florida just the other day. We're not even sure that's an airplane. This was from my backyard. We had a sunny day one, uh, one day this week and I was able to follow the sun across the sky. Now that I'm paying attention to this, and I noticed that this chemtrailing is happening in and around the sun at a very high level. I made a video about it. Go check it out. Here's that big ugly thing from south, the South Pole. Then we started to see the first rumblings of how they're going to package the story in London last Monday. They were going to um, actually call it a Saharan dust cloud, but um, the evidence is mounting and the corroborating evidence is mounting that it's not a Saharan dust cloud, it's, it's dust from space.
black dots. A lot of people have been cam capturing images like this from various webcams, especially in Mexico when the sun is setting, which seems to be an ideal position to see this object. Now, it would be one thing if it was one sky cam, but I went and looked at several size sky cams around the world, or in Mexico rather, Cozumel, Camarias, Reciros, <laughs> can't pronounce it. Now, of course, these dots line up with the object from the South Pole, so we think that the properties of the star, and this is the light around the sun, and this is the actual size of the sun, we think that the nemesis is sitting behind the sun, and that's why you're getting this strange effect in cameras. Just a theory. Some Southern Hemisphere sky cams. Here's one from Savannah on, De on December 15th showing a, a red, almost planet-like object. Same thing different day. Here's one where it expresses more like we see from the South Pole with the red cloud uh, surrounded by the bright, um, I think it's brown dwarf. Australia, 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 all different times and days. This one's from Brazil, so if you follow the sun you can actually see this object in different parts of the world. Here's one from the 18th of December from Brazil, another one from Australia. Another one from Australia. And again, you'll notice that these objects are well behind the clouds and are not a lens flare. Here's one from Brazil again. This one was compelling. This was from just the other day. Another one from Brazil. So what we think is happening here in this particular situation was on December 17th, when I confirmed that this is a red cloud surrounding this red dwarf, I went to the uh, South Pole cameras to go take a look um, and make some films actually. So this is the film that I made on December 22nd that showed the object. And here it is. We think those are two other objects, possibly another star. This thing's approaching, guys. This is corroborating evidence. This isn't one thing that you can look at and say there's a sun dot. It's not another thing that you can look at and say, oh, there's a lens flare. Here's the one from the 25th of December through today. This is even more shocking. And as this thing approaches, things are going to get worse, folks. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be meteor showers. There's going to be government lies. Here it comes. I get it. There's going to be a lot of things going on that we're going to have to deal with. And tonight I wanted to not only show you the evidence, but I want to talk about what we're going to do about this, guys. Here's from today. I believe that this is the biblical wormwood, as mentioned in the book of Revelation, that is coming towards us. And I'm sad about it, on one hand. But I'm happy on another hand. I know that this is the sign of the sunning, sign of the coming of my Lord Jesus Christ coming back. So I can take some comfort in that. But I get it, man. You're asking, when is this going to happen? What should I do? How should I take care of my family? I know. And he knows too. So what will you do? What will you do? Well, I have a message for you. This isn't a surprise to Jesus Christ. This situation he knew was coming from the beginning of time. He knew that you'd be participating in it. He knew that you'd be alive. He knew that your life, you would have breath in your body. He knew that you'd be smart enough to look at a video on YouTube from some stupid guy in Wisconsin talking to you about him. I know this guy pretty well, you guys. He drew me to this information to connect us so that I could tell you that he loves you, man. He's not pushing you away and he's not judging you right now. He's asking you to come in while the door is still open. 
And he, being Jesus that I know, will welcome you with open arms. And that's what you should do first. Let him in, man. Let Jesus in and then let his Holy Spirit fill you. That's the only thing that's going to give this, us the strength to get through this. And then find other believers to be with during this time that you can build a community with if you survive. And you can start to help other people. But I think that there's many of you that are watching this right now to this point of this tape that needed to hear what I'm saying right now. And I want to tell you something else. You're not alone. They're going to tell a lot of lies coming up, guys. They're going to tell us that aliens are coming and all kinds of weird stuff. Don't believe any of it, man. Jesus foresaw all of this coming. He talked about a great delusion happening in the end times. He talked about all how the world would act and react. And things are going to get pretty dark. It's not going to look good for a while. But I can tell you that you can hold on to that precious light of Jesus Christ. Because he's the creator of the universe. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Our light will go out in this world no matter what the enemy does. The truth will come out no matter what the enemy does. It's the enemy that should be scared of us folks, not, uh, not us of him. So if you could just take a moment, just quietly sit down and just invite him in your heart, man. Just tell him that you are sorry that you've rejected him. He'll take you back, man. He's a big boy. He can take it. He's not a ham fist baby god that's looking for a reason to smack you. He's a person, man. He's a person like you and me, with feelings. And he wants you to come back home now. The call is now to come home, everybody. Come home, he's saying. Come home. 